Hello and welcome once again to Intro to Computer Games and Simulations here at Lorain County Community College. I am Mike Substelny, the instructor this term. We are getting near the end of our adventure together and today we've got something a little bit different, even more different than what we've had before. Today we're going to discuss the health effects of video games. We will not be reading our textbook this week, we will instead be reading a few articles that are related to this topic. Let's talk about why we're doing that. Um, when we were getting this uh, program approved by uh, the Curriculum Council here at Lorain County Community College, we had to have all the different departments sign off that it was a good program, and they said, uh, gave us some feedback. One of the feedbacks we had was from the uh, Health and Physical Education Department saying we really didn't include much healthy stuff in our curriculum. And so we built into this class, Intro to Computer Games, that we would have a, a week devoted to the health effects of people playing video games. And then into this class, the serious games and simulations, we would have a research paper where you will actually uh, read scientific articles about the health effects of video games and write a paper. So in the first semester, you will have this week where we talk about it, read some articles, take some quizzes and such. And in the final semester, you will write a short paper about the health effects of video games. And it's a good question, does, does playing games impact health? Uh, there have been many health effects suggested, including eye strain, hypertension, carpal tunnel syndrome, which we are going to discuss at length today, lower back strain, obesity, possibly raised aggression, attention deficit disorder, type 2 diabetes, alcoholism, and even game addiction have been suggested as effects that uh, might impede the lives of those who play video games a lot. Um, let's talk about eye strain a moment first. In a 2002 survey of first through 12th graders, 37.7% reported symptoms of eye strain, and you can see that's from uh, Burke and Pepper Cumulative Trauma Disorder paper that was published. So it is a significant part of the population of gamers, uh, relatively young gamers, who were uh, reporting symptoms of eye strain. Hypertension, a 2007 study of the American Ver Journal of Hypertension, showed a correlation between uh, interactive sedentary behavior, behavior and uh, such as computer games and driving, and hypertension. So truck drivers are also at risk for this. Then obesity in a 2005 paper, Obesity, a research journal, found a relationship between hours playing computer games and obesity. There was a numerical relationship. You can see that was Earl S. Ford, was one of the researchers there. I invite you to check out these articles if you're interested in them. Now let's talk about carpal tunnel syndrome. That's one of my favorite topics. Uh, it's a repetitive strain injury, and these injuries can be caused by uh, repetitive tasks, forceful exertions, vibrations, sustained awkward positions, etc. It's when a part of your body does something repeatedly so many times that that body part may wear out. And computer gamers often do do this with their hands, as we're about to explore. All right, so uh, lifting can cause it, uh, carrying things in an awkward position, standing in an awkward position, things like that can cause uh, repetitive strain injuries. Now, carpal tunnel syndrome is thought to be caused by the repetitive use of the fingers. And we'll look into that in a moment. So it's not just computer games, but uh, anything that uses the fingers in a repeated way over and over and over could contribute to it. Let's talk about the anatomy of the carpal tunnel on this large picture here. Um, actually, could we please go full screen on the computer image for a moment to get a good look at that? Uh, thank you. So there are bones running through the wrist here. You see that's a bone, that's a bone, that's a bone, that's a bone. We're not going to ask you to memorize the names of these bones in this class. Uh, just understand that those are there going through the wrist. There are also tendons, these white things. Uh, going through there are tendons. They're like the brake cables on a bicycle where a uh, sort of a, a line goes through a sheath 
and poles in tension, ten tendons are in tension to transmit energy to the fingers. There's a ligament going across the top of the wrist. That's important for uh, our consideration. It's a very strong bit of tissue going right across the top of your wrist between this bone and this bone and wrapping this tunnel here that's got all those tendons and this thing, this nerve right here. That's our most important consideration. There's a nerve called the median nerve going right through the middle of your carpal tunnel. So this tunnel between these bones capped by this ligament is the carpal tunnel. It's got all these tendons that run to your fingers and this nerve. Well, that nerve is a tender, tender thing. Um, let's go to a little show and tell. Let's see if I can do that here. Going to... Um, got a carpal tunnel here. Uh, see if that'll open. We're going to run an Alice simulation for a moment here. Alice used to be the language we taught this class in before Game Maker was invented. It's a 3D language. Uh, I invite you to learn it. You can get it for free from Car Carnegie Mellon. And it's handy for doing interactive 3D graphics. Alice was actually created in the days when they thought that uh, people were going to be doing a lot of um, virtual reality using goggles. So let's go to carpal tunnel. Open. Okay, and we're going to play the simulation. Alright, let's... So those are uh, tendons moving in and out through a their sheaths here and here's a representation of the median nerve um, and that's a representation of fingers being moved by the uh, moving of those tendons so it's a little educational simulation for you and if we go to different angle on there showing what's happening now I can change the angle of that hand and you can see there would be less friction going through that tunnel with the hand at that nice neutral angle than there is at this bent angle and then think um, let's see There's a way I can bend the wrist back. Okay, you can see that nerve is turning red now. I'm going to relax it and it'll turn yellow. That was just showing that it's becoming irritated. Okay, let's come uh, back to our regular view of the lecture now. Uh, I hope that was helpful to you. All right, if we could have the camera back on me. Okay, so what that's showing is that as the fingers are flexing, these tendons that are in here um, are pulling the fingers closed, transmitting the power from the muscles that are here in your arm to your fingers. They're generating friction in those sheaths. If they generate friction, those sheaths can heat up and swell there's no room for them to go swell in that tunnel so that poor little median nerve gets crushed and you can get the symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome which we're going to talk about in a minute who is inclined to get carpal tunnel syndrome we know carpenters assembly line workers electricians truck drivers golfers gardeners and we also know that women are three times more likely to get carpal tunnel syndrome simply because their nerves aren't as 
why uh, and aren't as, they're, not their nerves, their carpal tunnel, their wrist doesn't have as much circumference as a man's nerve and they put it under exactly the same amount of stress, that it will be uh, crushed more easily, more likely. That's just a fact of anatomy. Um, and this is all because of the way they use their fingers repeatedly. And the question is, does it affect computer gamers? The computer keyboard has not been shown definitively to be associated with carpal tun tunnel syndrome, according to a Cleveland Clinic study that I will have you link to. There's a link in Angel for you to read that this week. Um, but theoretically, it's extremely possible, and I wouldn't be surprised if there are some people in this class that experience symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome, because it does affect gamers. The question is, is it caused by the gaming? So. I am aware of no current study that definitively links video games to carpal tunnel syndrome, although if there has been one published in the last few weeks, um, I haven't read it. But video gamers, here's the thing, you do all the things that are known to cause carpal tunnel syndrome. So it wouldn't surprise me if someone does find a scientific link. So let's talk about the symptoms. If you have carpal tunnel syndrome, one of the first things you'll experience is pain, tingling, and numbness in your fingers. There will be a weakness in your thumb. There will be a tendency to drop things that are grasped between the thumb and your forefinger. And the symptoms will be at their worst at night after you've had a long, hard day of using those fingers too much. And even when your hand is not in use, you may experience pain that would wake you up in the night. Um, and in fact, carpal tunnel syndrome often causes a loss of sleep, which could lead to other disorders. All right, the fingers that will be affected are the thumb. Can you see those yellow arrows? Maybe not. The thumb, the index finger, and the long finger here, these are the ones whose feeling goes through that median nerve here. So as that nerve gets crushed, you will not get the regular sensations from the thumb and those two fingers. You will get tingling and numbness and um, malfunction of that crushed nerve. How do you diagnose it? Well, there's this, there are two tests, Phelan's test and Tinnell's test. I'm not going to be able to demonstrate it very well here. You'll see uh, photos that demonstrate it better in ANGEL afterwards. But uh, electromyography and x-rays are often used. Um, electromyography is where they put electrodes into, well in this case it would be into your hand, into your fingers, that touch the nerves and see how the nerves are conducting the signal. If you've ever seen the movie The Right Stuff where they stick electrodes into Gus Grissom and they're starting to force his uh, hand to move and it's very painful for him. That's, that's the type of thing. That's not actually, they weren't actually testing him for carpal tunnel syndrome, but they were running electricity through his nerves to see how they were conducting. And they can also take x-rays of that nerve to see if it's crushed. And probably uh, other radiological procedures nowadays. Let's talk about the treatment for carpal tunnel syndrome. One thing you can do is wear a splint or a brace. If you are wearing something that prevents you from bending your wrist, that keeps your wrist in that neutral position all the time, yes, it is inconvenient. It is harder to perform some tasks, but you will not have the increased friction of operating your hand at a higher uh, incident angle there. So as long as you wear that, it will give your wrist a breather. Another thing you can do is take anti-inflammatory drugs. These are often steroidal drugs that will reduce the inflammation of those uh, tendons inside your carpal tunnel, which will cause the swelling to go down and a little less crushing on the nerve. There's also surgery. There is a surgical procedure called the carpal release, where they cut the transcarpal ligament and release the pressure there. Uh, that's crushing the nerve. That's one of the more extreme things, but it's actually a very common surgical procedure and it does bring relief to thousands and thousands of people. 
Okay, that's all I'm going to say about carpal tunnel syndrome this week. There is more material for you to see online and some articles for you to read. There will be a quiz. And of course, in lab, you are going to continue to work on your video games. Next week, we're going to talk about game maker scripting for artificial intelligence as we go to some of the coolest games you will make this entire semester. Until then, this is Mike Substelny signing off for Intro to Computer Games and Simulations here at Lorain County Community College.